Hey everyone, I want to, as much as possible, try to share tips and tricks in Excel that relate back to what I'm actually doing in my own job. I work as a financial analyst, um, so I work in Excel a lot. Um, I've had the opportunity to help a lot of other people in Excel, deal with a lot of questions. I really enjoy helping people, sharing what I'm learning, you know, just in continuing to learn about Excel. Um, so that being said, uh, pivot tables are a really powerful function. A lot of people that are using Excel, you know, in any kind of serious capacity are oh, going to be well aware of pivot tables. But what you might not be aware of is that you can actually use a count distinct function within pivot tables. If you uh, use some something called the data model in a pivot table. So I'm going to kind of walk through how you would actually enable the data model in a pivot table and how that could be useful. So for this particular question, it came up that there were some accounts that were assigned multiple sections of the PL um, for the financial statements that we use. And this was creating a problem. So the question was, what accounts have the multiple sections and which ones don't? And so we had, you know, kind of this multitude of data, much bigger than what I have in this example here, but I've created a sample just to kind of give you a flavor of what the problem was. So like in this data set, we just have 100 and, you know, 109 rows, um, including the header there, and we'll have, you know, account one that maps to overhead. Um, you know, we can see account two for most of everything we can see here maps to SGNA. We skip all the way down, we see that account four matches to overhead. Now, one of these accounts, um, I, I kind of created the problem within here. I have one of these accounts uh, going to multiple PL sections. And I'm going to show you how you can quickly get to that. Now, of course, you know, one of the things that when you're actually using a smaller amount of data, you know, in this data set, you could kind of go through this and just eyeball it. But again, if you had thousands of rows, or, you know, tens of thousands of rows, you're not really going to be able to rely on that method. So I'm going to show you an easier way that you could go about um, approaching that with this count distinct, you know, uh, feature you can utilize in a pivot table. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this data. If you don't already know, I'm going to go ahead and use control shift, arrow key to the right, arrow key down, and that's going to automatically select my entire range of data that I want to use. I'm going to go up here, hit insert, and then off to the left, there's a button for a pivot table. I'm going to left click on that. Now, again, if you're creating a pivot table at this point, most people are just going to go ahead and hit OK. Um, but there's this little box at the bottom that says add this data to the data model and this box is going to enable you to do a few different things and Again, one of the things that it's going to enable you to do is Utilize that count distinct. So let's go ahead and hit add this data to the data model I'm Gonna click ok and this is going to bring up a pivot table like we're used to seeing or like you be used to seeing if you again are working with a pivot table I'm going to go ahead in this case and drop down my account in the rows portion of this pivot table. I'm going to grab the PL section and bring that over to values. And by default, by default here, it's going to show you the count of the PL sections. But if we left click into this, and at the very bottom, it's going to say value field settings, it's going to show everything that we can do with that. So we can add it, you know, we can count average, max. We can do all of these things, but in this case, what I want to do is count distinct. So it's the very last one. And so when we do that, I'm able to say, okay, how many PL sections, uh, you know, again, how many distinct PL sections are there for account one? Well, there's just one, which is exactly what we'd want in this case. Account number two, however, has two PL sections, which was the issue that I was encountering at work. And then three and four are fine. We see that they each have one. We could go a little further with this with a pivot table and identify quickly just from this view what the different sections of that PL are. We could go ahead and just click on this PL section, left click, drag it down to the rows, and that would show you that uh, our account number two has uh, it's being mapped to material and to SGNA. And in this particular case, we'd like to identify one area that it's being driven to and not both. So that's a way you could quickly identify that. That being said, you know, just like a lot of other things, there's a lot of ways that you can approach this problem. This happens to be one of the fastest ways that I'm aware of, but if you have a faster way, I'd love to hear about it. Um, so 
that being said, I do want to show you another way um, that this count distinct can come in handy. So let's go at a different data set here. Um, so let's say, you know, I just made this up for an example. We have, you know, multiple states with multiple people living in them. Um, so if we go all the way down, we see that it starts with Michigan. We have some people's names there. Uh, and then all the way down to Ohio with some states in between. Now, if I just ask the question, how many unique names are in each state? With the normal pivot table, you're not going to get there. And I can, just to kind of illustrate that, I can, again, highlight that range of data here. Um, go ahead, go to pivot table. And this time I'm just going to use the normal function just to kind of show you what this would look like and the advantages of being able to add that to the data model. <clears throat> so when we do that, if I again pull down state into rows, and if I pull name over, it's going to count them for me. So I can see that California has 10 names, and you might be tempted to say, okay, and then there's 10 unique names, but that's not necessarily true. Everybody in California could be named Sally, and there's actually only one unique name of Sally in that case, assuming that they're all you know, spelled the same way. Of course, you could have different variations of the way you spell Sally. <clears throat> so that's kind of how that works in a normal pivot table. Let's go back to the data. We still have it highlighted. I'm going to go ahead and hit insert pivot table, but this time again, I'm going to hit add this data to the data model. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to pull down state into the rows section here. I'm going to pull down name. Once again, I'm going to left click on the count of name, hit at the very bottom value field settings. And that's going to bring up a range of things that I can do again to these values. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I'm going to see that count distinct again. I'm going to click that and hit OK. And now in this case, I can see that California has, even though it had 10 people, it had nine unique names. Illinois has three. Michigan has seven. Ohio has three. Texas had seven. So those are just a couple ways that you can use count distinct within a pivot table if you just use the add you know, to the data model. Um, so let me guys know what you think, if this is helpful, if you have different ways you'd solve these problems, um, really would love to, love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.